All right, Tom. Hello. Here we go. So we are in chapter four. Chapter four. And chapter four is called The Hideout. Okay. So you have successfully uh, uh, freed Professor Marsden. Yes, and slaughtered many primates <laughs> in the process. But we counted, and uh, so so for all of you, uh, if these things drop the way they're supposed to drop, it's going to be once a month at the end of the, the end of the month, last Friday. But for us, we just did this last week. <laughs> this is pretty fresh in our minds. But I think the count, I think the count was four dead and one <laughs> injured that escaped. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> And, monster. And it's all with a pocket knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. All right, chapter four, The Hideout. After encountering Hideout. dangers outside the house, facing multiple ghosts inside the house, discovering an underground laboratory and stumbling <laughs> upon an angry chimpanzee. You're ready to get some answers about this place and the nightmares that brought you here, Tom. You still, have a, you still have that picture of the original Nightmare, right? I forgot to send that yes, to you in this batch. I have that picture. Yeah, I think you have like two versions of it already. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very complex. And a lot of it is already makes sense with that stuff that we've kind of connected to. The pool, the sword, mm -hmm. you've seen that already. The lady. Yeah. Yeah, the lady makes sense. All right, the mysterious phone calls that I got this morning, you say... It was you, wasn't it? Hmm. Phone call? What phone call? Wait, it couldn't have found a way to access the phone lines, now, could it? Professor Marsden's eyes go wide. And then he sees the look on your face and shakes his head. Well, th th that's not important right now, he says. Something about, th something about his tone leads you to suspect that it is important, though. But you don't push it at the moment. If you've managed to get this far, you must be quite the aspiring detective. You go on and you tell him that the recurring nightmares that drove you to delve into this whole bizarre mystery of a place. Nightmares, he says. Fascinating. If, if your dreams mean what I think they do, then I'm glad you're here. I can explain oh, okay. more later, but right now... Getting to the Neuron Inhabitor mainframe is the crucial thing. It's the only way to retake the lab from my dastardly former assistant, Carol. Carol? <laughs> what a name for like, this. He's like Carol Baskin before Carol Baskin. Yeah, yeah. He says the name in a hoarse whisper as if speaking it aloud could summon some ancient evil. Uh, together we discovered a source of technology far, be far, far beyond anything this world has ever seen. But she betrayed me. She used our work to take control of the chimpanzees and to start counterfeiting the money with the with, with the local crime syndicate. <laughs> we made scientific discoveries worthy of Einstein, of Galileo, and she uses it all to. He trails off. I'm sorry, I, I, I've been locked in here so long that I've forgotten my manners. Now that you've freed me, I can open a secret passage for you that will lead to the neural inhabitor mainframe. It will take you through the area where most experimental works are being conducted. But, but, but be careful. It can be dangerous in there. I, I, it's just me going? You ask with fear in your voice. Yes, he says. I'll need to monitor your progress on the, from the operations room where I have access to the security system. Here, use this earpiece so that we can communicate. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, clue number 91, Tom. Okay. And this is your goal. Disable the neuron inhibitor mainframe. All right. That's what you've got to do. Slide this up here where it belongs. The clear glass door leads to the temporal manipulation lab. The professor continues. 
The faucet glass door goes to the psychic development room. The professor okay. takes off for the operations room as the secret passage opens from the empty jail cell next door. The two glass doors are now before you. Too bad the professor didn't explain which route was the best way to get to the Neuron Inhabitor mainframe. Hmm. And also, why do you keep a secret door in a jail cell? Yeah, that's the worst place to keep it. <laughs> this place is full of bad ideas. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so your two, your two options are to, to try the temporal manipulation lab or to try the psychic development room. Definitely going for psychic development. I uh, had a feeling that would be it. So that's... Uh, yes. Story card number 115. Number 115. Here we go. That was fast. Ooh, there's a picture on the back. <laughs> this room features several rows of blue metal chairs. Dome-shaped helmets attached to odd-looking devices hang above the chairs. Like hair dryers. Yeah. Or like maybe that thing in Ghostbusters. Yeah, they yeah, put on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a large glass tube, big enough for you to step into, with a door on the side. A green button is accessible from inside of the tube. You slowly realize that you've seen these machines before in photos in the reference book Ghosts and Ghouls. Which, of course, you have on your bookshelf back home. The photos were in a chapter about how rogue parapsychologists were attempting to give ordinary people psychic abilities. If you remember correctly, the blue chairs are attached to the machines intended to give the subjects pyrokinesis, the ability to start fires with the mind. Large glass tube is in an energized chamber that gives people telekinesis, the ability to move objects with one's mind. Both seem ready to go. And there's your little helmet device. Okay. A metal stairwell on the far side of the room leads to some sort of observational booth which overlooks the room you're in and possibly others. So those are your three choices. Pyrokinesis... Uh, in the chair, telekinesis in the chamber, or skip all the equipment and go to the observation booth. I'm going to try telekinesis. Okay. So that is story card 106. 106. Ooh, almost fell right into my hand. You enter the energized chamber and shut the door. You press the green button on the interior wall and the room goes dark, while the large glass tube emits a blinding white light, forcing you to cover your eyes with your hands. You can feel the machine rewriting your neural pathways to achieve mis to activate mysterious, previously untapped portions of your brain. Oh, man. The pain is horrible. Parts of you think that if, if you can just endure the pain a, a little longer, unlimited mental powers might, just might be unlocked. Another part of you is concerned that your head might literally explode. Oh, There's a no. picture of the chamber, all the smoke coming out of it. Yeah. Okay. Tom, you are uh, you're very lucky, according to the first line anyway. Premonition. Yeah. Get a premonition. If okay. you are level four or higher in the psychic scale, you are just on that, Tom. Mm -hmm. You are just on that. So you do get a premonition. You get clue number 93. 92. Is it out of order? There it is. Of course, it was out of order. That doesn't help me. Oh. Um... Oh, okay. I see what. Uh, okay, so I know the picture might be a little bit fuzzy for you. Uh, so uh, it, it's wavy, obviously. It's a very wavy image, but it, it looks it looks like a, 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 
a vent or a, 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 a handle on a trap door, and there's like smoke and stuff. Okay, okay. I see that. I can read it. Okay, you see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, actually, I, I think I had it upside down. I think the door is like opening towards okay, towards yeah. the bottom. All right, all right. I'll add this with it, and uh, I will send you that picture so you have a better copy of it uh, when there's a chance. Beautiful. Okay, so if you stay in the energized chamber and work through the pain, you're going to draw clue number 98. If you can't take it anymore, it'll be clue number 103. All right. How can I tell how much I can take with a roll? We'll find out when we draw the clue. Okay. All right. That's what Let's you want to... You want to just... Mm. Let's power through mm. and my teeth and bear it. Like, like Steve Rogers when he's telling him I can do it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that didn't sound very confident. <laughs> All right. 98. 98. Let's see if your head explodes. Yeah, exactly. 98. All right. Here in my hand. Tom. What? Telekinesis. <gasps> Boom. Is mine. All right, so it says, You now have the power to move things with your mind. You think about this as you run for the observation booth. Once per challenge, this is your ability, this is what you get for it, your power, your, your skill here. Once per challenge, you can raise the danger meter by two in order to re-roll a die roll. Okay. So if you had to use it right now, it's on the bottom level four. Uh, two would put it at the third and top four. And you would get a second roll. Um, and uh, you keep this item. You, you, can, you can continue to use You don't discard this, Tom. Uh, you can, with me. That's you can awesome. Do this once per challenge, every challenge. That's pretty cool. So it's essentially like a re-roll if I don't like what I roll or it was unsuccessful, I get to roll again. It will raise the danger level, but yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then it says, keep awesome. this item and move forward one space on the psychic scale. And so now you're at 17. Okay. And then it says, go to story card 99. 99. Ooh, that's right. That's pretty close. Ooh, okay, so the observation booth has thick windows that look down into a circular chamber where you see a human-sized chimp in a hospital gown sitting at a table. The poor animal's head is shaved and hugely swollen. Electrodes are attached to pulsing veins. The chimp is gazing intently at a small wooden boat which is floating in mid-air above the table. Oh, he's got telekinesis, too. Oh, it gets worse, Tom. Okay. Because the chimpanzee sees you, and the moment his eyes meet yours, you, you start to black out. Oh, you break eye contact just before losing consciousness and decide you'd better exit this room quickly. Next to a fire extinguisher on the wall is a map which gives you a quick overview of this area. You orient yourself and see that the observation booth is next to the crowd, crowd genetics lab and the supercomputer room. A little picture of the floating boat. Okay. All right. I thought it was going to be a battle there. I thought it was going to be, uh, and then you and him have to lock yeah. into telekinetic battle. Yeah, yeah, I kind of was hoping that's what it would be. And if all it fails, it's, it's run. If all spells, you got one bullet in the gun, you can always shoot the psychic chimp in the head. <laughs> Stop this. Telekinesis this. <laughs> so your choices are the cryogenetics lab or the supercomputer room. You know what? Let's do supercomputer. Okay. 109 for the supercomputer. Oh, I see a lot of capital letters. See a lot of oh no I don't need one ten I'm gonna put that back before I see anything on it. 
Okay. We okay, so Oh, great. Okay. As you enter the room, the computer lights up. Present your credentials. A digital voice demands it must be the computer. You you mutter something about being the new lab assistant. I judge that to be false. You have come here seeking answers. My memory banks contain all the information you desire, but access is forbidden. You don't see a keyboard. So apparently voice commands are the only way to interact with this thing. Unless, of course, you can best me in a competition of my choosing. The computer... <laughs> the computer continues. Be wary, human. No flesh creature has ever defeated me and my limitless mind... This is like a Matthew Broderick movie. Do you yeah, want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? Uh, okay. All right. Now what is he doing? Okay, so it says here that there's a free action, Tom. Mm -hmm. If you agree to compete with the supercomputer, we're going to draw uh, clue number 97 and see what happens. Okay. <sighs> yes, of course. Was there ever a question? I'm going to... <laughs> compete with the supercomputer. Oh my god, this is this this game is so 80s. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. 97. Here we go, Tom. A compartment opens in the computer's casing and a robotic arm extends from inside it. The supercomputer wants to arm wrestle you. <laughs> okay. So, required challenge arm wrestle the supercomputer. Now, this is a strength challenge. You are at four. You don't have any bonuses for strength challenge. But remember, you have telekinesis. So I can reroll. Now, you Re also have a level. bottle of water, which uh, when you discard it, will lower the danger meter by three. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Oh, okay. You. Oh, you have coffee. That's right. And by discarding it, you can get a free re-roll, and that doesn't raise anything. Okay, good. Okay, okay. so if you want to do this, Tom, you uh, you need four or better. Four or better. Okay, here we go. D6. Oh, I got a two. two. Oh, Tom, lose. Range the, raise the danger meter by one and try again, unless... Okay, well, yeah, that has to okay, that has to go up by one. Yeah, do I have to just have to get rid of the coffee in order to do it again? Well, you uh, you don't have to because it, it does say try again. <laughs> try again, okay. But you uh, could use your water to lower the danger meter by three, which will put it back in the three level. I'm gonna do that. Okay, goodbye, I'm lower coffee. By three. Goodbye, coffee, everyone. So that, instead of being middle four, it goes down three, one, two, three. It is now middle three. Okay. Um, Here we go. Oh, no, sorry, that, was, that, was, that was the water. Sorry, not the coffee. That was the water. Six. All right, Tom. Nice. Nice. You got six. So now we're going to draw one, zero, two. One zero two, Tom. One zero two. Quantum synthesis stabilizer is what this says. You defeated the supercomputer and gain access to its <gasps> files. <laughs> okay. One is a diagram of a rod-shaped device called the quantum synthesis stabilizer. Okay, now this says here... Uh, Two different things are going to happen with we have clue number 39. Let me see. Clue number 39. Have we gotten that already? Yes. Clue number 39 is your large metal rod. Okay. Okay. So we do have clue number 39. That's nice. Yes. Thank you when that works out. So that means keep this item and move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Okay. 
One, two, you're at 19. 21 is level five. You're at 19. Okay. And then it says finish story card 109. Okay. There are two doors leading out of the supercomputer room. You start to open one door, and the computer shouts, Do not attempt to enter the armory. You start to open the other door, and the computer shouts, Do not attempt to enter the observatory. The computer may be pushy, but it's also quite informative. So do you want to take the observatory door anyway, or the armory door anyway? Observatory door. Oh, I thought you were going to go for weapons. 108. No. I got my telekinesis, baby. And a gun and a pocket knife has been yeah. killing everyone. 108. You go up a long flight of stairs that leads to an observatory where you find Professor Marsden staring at you. How did you get here first? Oh, sorry. How did you get here first, you ask? <laughs> I, I, should, I should check who the voice is before I start doing it. <laughs> It's my fault, he murmurs sadly, lost in thought. We reached out to the stars and they reached back. But when the creature made contact, we got greedy and captured him for further study. I fear your nightmares mean that he's sending out telepathic messages in hopes of being rescued. Okay. If you want them to end, you must set the creature free. This is why, Professor Morton continues... We need to take back the compound from Carol. <laughs> Disable the neuron inhibitor mainframe, controlling the chimpanzees, and then, of course, free the alien ambassador. Carol watches over the mainframe constantly, he continues. <laughs> so you'll be heading into great danger. Make sure you're fully prepared before you move on. Oh, Tom, Wow. Uh, okay, so there's a hallway to the mess hall and a back door that leads outside the house. So check this out. Story return. Okay. You, you, you didn't get to the goal yet, so this is a little different. This chapter is a little bit different here. You still haven't reached the goal, but you're at a story return point. Okay. So it okay. says here, if you would like to go back for anything you missed... These are your choices. You have uh, four of them. Uh, three. Three. Okay, and also, Tom, each one of them will cost three points. A three-point increase on the danger meter. Okay. So the first one is to head to the temporal manipulation lab. The other is the psychic development room, which you were at. I don't know how tempted you are to try for pyrokinesis or not. Uh, the, the armory and the observation booth, which is where you're at right now. So I guess you don't need the observation booth. So psychic development, armory, or temporal manipulation. Psychic. Oh, but we, we went in the psychic development one, right? And the you, temporal uh, one. But you did have the choice of sitting in the chair yeah, to gain pyrotechnic, pyrokinesis. Uh, what was the the last one? Uh, temporal manipulation, psychic... Yes. yes. That one. Let's uh, do that. That's going to raise by three. One, two, three. So you're back at the mid-four level. And that's going to be uh, temporal, 96. 96. Let's see how this goes. A massive machine with a glowing control panel is before you. The moment you step inside the room, the door slams shut behind you and the machine begins to hum. Professor Marsden said this area was dangerous, but you feel like oh, no. you feel like he should have warned you about all the self-closing doors around here on this level. The glow of the control panel is getting brighter and the hum is almost deafening now. You look for an off button, but only find a big dial with three settings. Past, present, and future. <laughs> past, present, and future? This, this is a time machine. If you don't pick a setting and fast, something seriously bad might happen. So there's a picture of a hand going for a dial. Okay. Past, and present, and future. Those are your three choices. Future. 
future. Let's do future. Future 112. Should never know you're on future time. 112. <laughs> it's the only thing that's interesting. Okay. Your surroundings fade out, and you feel the odd sensation of unstable time warping energy bombarding every cell of your body. It's, it's amazing how he knows how that feels like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Soon the laboratory walls fade back into view, or, well, parts of them do. The entire underground complex is now more or less a, a big pit. And you can see a dark, smoke-filled sky through the remains of the charred ceiling above you. A massive vehicle floats above the distant horizon, scanning the barren landscapes with searchlights. The time machine is still here, at least. It looks ancient and broken, but it's glowing, so it might be functioning enough for you to have one more time jump. There's a whole bunch of junk piled around it, which you can rummage through if you would like. Okay, there's no picture, no picture. But you have an optional challenge... And that is to search the junk. And it says that if you are level three or higher, which you are, that you are going to add a plus one to your roll in addition to any challenge boosts which you have, which you do not. You don't have any boosts for observation. But you will get a plus one because of your psychic level, which means it would be three or better. Okay. So I'm rolling, right? Five. All right, five. So you win. So that is clue number 96. There are a lot of the 90s. Okay. Ooh. The, the valence conduction capacitor. <laughs> you find a page of notes detailing a small whirling sphere called a valence conduction capacitor capacitor. Oh, Tom, isn't that yeah. the thing? If you have clue number 21, and I think that's Wait your... Wait a minute. It sounds familiar. 2963. 21. I do have 21. <laughs> yes. Nice. So those things you've got collected right, earlier see. are all paying okay. off. So you get to keep this item now and move to uh, move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. All right, Tom, you are now 21 points, which is the lowest, the bottom level of level five. It doesn't get any higher than level five. Okay. You're, you're nice. maxed out. So continue, finish card number 112. So now you're, that was an optional challenge. Now your choices are to walk towards the horizon to see what the future is all about. Well, you want no part of this future and use the time machine to get home. This really took a different spin. Since I'm here, I'm going to go forward and check out what this future's all about. You know I can't just walk away. Okay, yeah, I mean, you got that thing with the spotlight and everything. Oh, no. Oh, no, this is... This is okay, look. Did you forget about that? A massive vehicle floats above the distant horizon, scanning, <laughs> scanning the barren landscape with searchlights. Here's, here's what I've realized, that I have just hit an end point, and that this is most certainly death. But also, to have you read me my... My futuristic death <laughs> almost makes it worth it. So you 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 want to go to the horizon and see what's going on? Um, is is that what you think will bring your death that I will read so eloquently to you? That it will most certainly bring my death, but it would probably be a really fun death. No, you know what? All right, I'm going to stay true to the game. I can't just throw myself onto every interesting death that comes across. I'm going to use the machine and go back to the present. Oh, you did surprise me there, Tom. All right, so going home is story card number 92. We just draw 92 on the clues as well. All right, let's see what happens. Maybe this was a good choice. 
You are surprised to hear the professor's voice in your earpiece. I have access to Time Machine remotely, he says. Hold on tight, I'm bringing you home. Wait, uh, hold on tight, to what? <laughs> your surroundings fade out again, and before you know it, you're back in the temporal lab. The machine appears to be on its last legs. A disturbing amount of black smoke is wafting in the time machine, and you decide to get moving before the whole thing bursts into flames. Fortunately, two wall panels are now open, leading to new hallways. Okay, Professor, which way from here, you ask? To the left is the experimental supercomputer, and the armory is on the right, he says. But it's, it's not safe to... Whatever technology is transmitting his voice shorts out. The experimental supercomputer on a green desk with a curious oversized orange frog paperweight. It looks like it's made of metal and must be quite heavy. The eyes on the, the, eyes on the orange frog are yellow and you feel yourself being drawn to them. Interesting. So you can either head for the armory... Or you can check out the supercomputer next to the orange frog paperweight. Orange frog paperweight supercomputer. It's calling to you, Tom. It is. It's calling to me. It's calling to you like no other. Oh, not 110. It was 17. Were we already on? Oh, wait a second. 19? I don't see that there. Did we already... Did we just do a circle? Yes, we did a circle. We, we did, did a circle. Yeah, the supercomputer. Hello, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Okay. So the two choices were the observatory, which is where you came from, you know the professor is, or you can go to the armory. Armory. All right. Um... Let's go to the armory. 94. Ooh. Is this is still all part of our, like, I get to go back and, like, re-explore everything. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, so, 94. You enter the armory, and the door closes behind you. And then oh, you hear no. it lock automatically. The room is nearly empty, and you realize that with a... Shudder that whatever weapons are usually kept here are all probably in the hands of people, or well, actually chimps, roaming the halls outside. The only thing left is a massive artillery gun mounted on a swivel in the center of the room. There's also a bunch of lockers lining one wall if you'd like to search them. So yeah, big, big gun. Oh my god, yeah. Has um, has a seat. That's how big it is. Has a seat. You sit in it. And it's, uh, I'm definitely searching the lockers because that's part of the vision. Lockers <laughs> are part of the vision. That is an option. Mm -hmm. So yes, and it says if you have level three, you're better on psychic, which you do. You get a plus one, so you're at four, which means you need a three or better now. Let's do it. Raise the danger meter by two, and you may try again. All right. So you're at five with a plus one. You need a four or better. Four or better. <laughs> I got a three. <sighs> That's not in the cards. Wait a minute. What about, what do I still have? Do I still have uh, water, coffee? You have the coffee discard to, but you're getting re-rolls. Yeah, you're but you can use, uh, no, the telekinesis you don't want to do. That'll give you a reroll, but raise by two. Really, there's nothing going on right now for you. Just. No, no. All right. I'm going to have to forget the lockers. Oh, okay. You're giving up? Well, what would be my other option? To roll again? Four or better. Roll again and get a four or better. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> number six. Six, six. Six. Because, oh. oh. I did forget to, how to do that, how to bring it down. So it's three. 
minus two. Okay, so I, I had to move the uh, the meter up for you to do it again, which actually did uh, knock it back down to three. You lost two psychic points. Yeah. Okay. So you are you are at uh, nineteen, which is two points away from level five now. Uh, you got it's it. Still good. It's yeah, still good. it's still good. Ninety two. Ninety two. Sounds like something you can get back. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, the hypersonic isotropic resonator is yours now, Tom. Okay. And it's asking if we have 87. Do we have clue number 87? Um, I, may, I think we might actually. Hold on. Yes, we do. That's the crystalline cap, Tom. Yep. So that means we get to keep this. <laughs> and two spaces forward on the psychic meter. So you're back at 21, oh, level back, 5. Back there. And then finish story card 94. So you can, uh, if you blow a hole through the door to the stairwell. Oh, sorry. I forgot to read a whole chapter here. A whole paragraph. There's a door here, and you can see through its window that it leads into a stairwell. Unfortunately, this door is locked. The artillery gun you found has a shell in it, though, so you could probably blast your way through. As a matter of fact, why limit yourself? With this thing, you could probably get through the wall opposite the door. Instant shortcut. So, uh, do you want to use this big artillery gun to blow through uh, to the stairwell or blow through the wall? You know what? You miss stuff with shortcuts. I'm going to blow through the stairwell. Through the stairwell, one zero eight. Well, that brings us around in a circle. Going up the flight of stairs, the observatory, Professor Marsden. Professor Marsden. So you are back up with Professor Marsden now. Okay. Uh, so do you wish to? Uh, you went to the temporal lab. If you want to go back to the psychic room and try for pyrokinesis to see if it you get it or if it burns you. And that's it. No, I'm not going to try the pyrokinesis. I say let's keep moving forward. All right. So, uh, so this means try the mess hall or leave the house through the back door. Oof. You know what? Mess hall. Feeling a little peckish. <laughs> All right, let's cut this here and see what happens next installment. Heading off to Probably the mess hall. A lot of bananas. You know that speciesist. Yeah. <laughs>